Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, we explored some Linux basics and how to set up a Linux environment on a Windows operating system. In today's video, we will dive deeper into Linux basics and explore essential commands that every Linux user should know. If you haven't watched the Linux basics part 1 video yet, I highly recommend watching it first before continuing with this video. Firstly, we will start our discussion with Linux file system. So, what is Linux file system? On a Linux system, everything is considered to be a file. The structure and the logic rules used to manage files and their names are called file systems. Linux file system is generally a built-in layer of a Linux operating system used to handle the data management of the storage. Basically, it controls how data is retrieved and stored. Okay. Now you might be wondering why it is important to understand the file system. What benefits will we gain by learning about it, right? Having a solid understanding of Linux file system will enhance your Linux skills. In addition to that, it will also help you to understand the location of different Linux components. As you will be aware of different Linux components and their location, it will definitely save your time in navigation. It will also improve your troubleshooting skills because you will be able to easily find the log files and configuration files and other files for troubleshooting the issues. The Linux file system is organized hierarchically with the root directory as serving as a starting point for all other the directories. On Linux, the file name or the directory names are case sensitive. So please remember that. Now let's take a quick tour through some of the common directories in the Linux file system. First one, the root directory denoted by a forward slash. It is a top level directory and serves as the starting point for navigating the file system. From there, directories branch out creating a structured and organized system. Next, bin directory. The bin directory contains essential executable files that are required for basic system functionality. And then, dev directory. The dev directory contains the device files. These includes terminal devices, USB or any devices attached to the system. Next one, etc. The etc directory stores system configuration files. Whenever any new application is installed, the configuration files are always kept here by default. So if you want to review any application configuration, then this is the location you need to look for. Okay. Next one, home directory. Home directory contains user specific files and directories. So users can store their personal files and directories in this home directory. Next one, media. When you connect a removable media such as USB disk, SD card or DVD, a directory is automatically created under the media directory for them. You can access the content of the removable media from this directory. Then OPT directory. The OPT directory is used installing or storing the files of third party applications that are not available from the distributions repositories. Next one, USR directory. The USR directory which is short for Unix system resources contains files and directories that are not required for basic system functionality but are essential for running installed software and supporting user specific operations. Next one, temp directory. As the name suggests, this directory holds the temporary files. Many applications use this directory to store their temporary files. Even if you can use this directory to store your temporary files. Finally, var directory var short for variable. In this directory, all the programs store runtime information like system logging, user tracking and other files that system programs create and manage. The files stored here are not cleaned automatically and hence it provides a good place for system administrators and other users to look for information about the system or application behavior. So if you want to verify any log files, then you can look for those log files in this var directory. Okay. Next, let's look at another important concept of Linux that is shell. So what is a shell? In simple words, the shell is a program that takes commands from the keyboard and gives them to the operating system to perform. We can also say it is an interpreter which allows users to interact with the Linux operating system. On most Linux systems, a program called bash, which stands for born again shell, an enhanced version of original Unix shell program, SH acts as the default shell program. Besides Bash, there are other shell programs available for Linux systems like KSH, ZSH, etc. Now let's look at the concept of terminal. Basically, it is a program called a terminal emulator. This program that opens a window and lets you interact with the shell. In this program, user typically will type all the different Linux commands based on their requirements. Next, we will try to understand the concept of Linux commands. Basically, a Linux command is a text based instruction used to perform specific tasks or operations on a Linux operating system. These commands are executed in a terminal or console. Linux commands can be used for a wide range of activities like navigating the file system, managing the files and directories, system information and management, package management, networking, etc. 
So these Linux commands are mainly classified into four categories. First one, executable program. An executable program like the available files in slash user slash bin. Within this category, programs can be compiled binaries such as programs written in C or C++ or programs written in scripting language such as the shell, Perl, Python, Ruby, etc. Bash provides a number of commands internally called shell built-ins. These are built into shell itself and that's why they're called as shell built-ins. And the next category is shell functions. These are small shell scripts integrated in the environment. And finally, alias. An alias is a command that we can define ourselves built from the other command. Okay. Next, let's look at the command structure. The basic structure of a Linux command typically follows a consistent pattern. It has three components. First one, the command, the name of the executable or built-in command we want to run, and then options. These are optional flags or switches that modify the behavior of the command. Options usually start with a dash or hyphen or double dash or double hyphens. And finally, arguments. The targets are inputs for the command. These can be files, directories, or other data the command acts upon. Okay. There are many different commands available in Linux to learn. However, for our series, we will target some essential commands that every Linux user should know. Now let's look at those essential commands practically with some examples. So for our learning purposes, I have listed out all the different essential commands with some examples and updated those commands in our video notes. So those video notes are available in our GitHub repo and I have given the video notes link in the description. So you can use those video notes for your reference purpose. Okay. So I I have already opened the github repo in the browser window so here i have listed out different essential commands with some examples so we will go through each commands and try to understand the purpose and also try to execute those commands in the terminal okay so in order to execute these commands first we need to have a linux environment right so in our previous video we have set it up the linux environment in the windows environment so first thing what we need to do is we need to start the virtual machine. Okay, so let's minimize this and then open the Oracle VM virtual box and then select the Alma desktop and then click start button. So if you follow along the previous video, then you will also see the similar Alma desktop VM in the Oracle VM. Okay, so you may need to wait for a couple of minutes until this virtual machine is up and running. Once it is started, then it will redirect us to the login screen where we need to type the username and password. So now the VM is up and running. Okay. So either you can log in directly from here or you can use the other methods, which I told you in our previous video. In real time, we always try to connect the virtual machines or our server using SSH client. So let's follow the same practice here as well. Let's minimize this and then open the SSH client. In our previous video, I have used the mobile XTERM. You can very well use any other SSH clients, whichever is comfortable to you. Okay. So let's open this mobile XTEM SSH client. In the previous video, I also tried to log in using this SSH client. That is where the session is already saved here. So I don't need to go to VM to get the IP. So I can simply double click the session. So it will try to connect to that VM. Okay. So let's double click this. So that will ask us to enter the password. Okay. So let's type the password as admin user. And then we will get this pop-up message. You can click yes to save the session or you can click no. Okay. So once the login is successful, then we will be seeing this screen. So here we can quickly understand who is the user logged in and then also the mission name. Since this VM is deployed in our local mission, that is why it is showing us localhost. And then we will have the tilde symbol, which represents the home directory of this user and then dollar prompt. So if you log into any server or VM, then this is the information that you will be seeing at the beginning. Okay. So this prompt can be customized. So some administrators, they will customize it in a different way. So don't get confused. And this is the place where we need to type any command okay so if you want to type something you need to type after the dollar symbol so once you type the command then behind the scenes what will happen is the shell will take this command and give it to the Linux operating system for the execution if you are giving the proper command then it will give you the expected output if you given any incorrect thing for example in this case we are just typing some gibberish and then pressing enter it is telling that the particular command is not found okay so for our practices purposes i have also uploaded a couple of log files into github repo so first let's download those log files and then upload into this vm so the process of downloading those log files is very simple you know go to the github repo and then expand the sample logs and then try to select the log file and then click the download raw file so it will download this file into your local downloads folder you may need to do the same thing with the nginx log files as well okay once you downloaded these two log files and the next step is we need to upload those log files into this vm 
So using mobile XM, it's very easy. If you are using any other SSH clients, try to Google the process to upload any files to that particular VM using that SSH client. Okay. If you are using mobile XM, what you need to do is you just need to click this upload to current folder button which will ask us to select the file so we can select both files by pressing shift button and then click open so what it will do is it will try to upload those log files to that vm okay so whatever the directories that we are seeing on the left these are all the directories that are available in the user home directory and you can see these two files are also uploaded okay so once you upload the file then the next step is go back to our github repo we will follow all the different essential commands okay so the first command in our list is type. So this is to identify the type of a given command. In our previous slides, we learned that Linux commands are classified into four categories, right? Executable, shell built-in, shell function, and then alias. So if you want to know the category of any particular command, then you should use the type command. The syntax is type paste command. For example, let's try to find the type of type command. So go back to the terminal and then here type paste type so this will tell us what category this type belongs to okay so after typing this command press enter in the output we can see the type is a shell built-in so this is a shell built-in command that comes along with the bash so let's try to find out the type of ls command so type type space ls so ls is an alias so the original command is ls hyphen hyphen color equal to auto so the developers has created an alias for this original command and the next try to find out the type of cp command so type cp here that the cp command is unexecutable because it is not giving the output as a shell built in r it is not telling that this is an alias right it is giving you a path so that means it is an executable so all the executables by default will be in slash user bin and the cp is the executable name so this is the actual path of this cp so if somebody is typing cp then it is referring the executable in this path okay so this type command can help us to understand the type of a target command so the next command is which which will help us to understand the location of a given executable the syntax for the which command is we need to type which to that space and then the executable for example if you want to find out where exactly this ls is located in the linux system so you can type which space ls so it will tell us the path again this ls is also available in slash user slash bin okay let's find out the type location so type which space type so this type is also available in user slash bin and the next command is help so if you want to know more about any given command then you can make use of this help the syntax is help paste options and then you should type the command for example i want to know more about ls command so type help space ls it is telling that there are no help topics available for this ls it is also giving some suggestion type help help or man kls okay so let's see another command let's type help paste cp this command is also not available let's type help hyphen cd so for some specific commands we may not able to get the documentation or the information using help we may need to use the other help commands which i'm going to talk about after these commands okay so for this cd command we have the help information here it is telling what is the purpose of cd so the cd is to change the shell working directory okay so if you want to change from the current working directory to a target directory then you should use the cd command it is also giving different options that we can use with the cd so if you want to know more about then you can use quickly help command to go through that particular command that you want to execute and the next command is hyphen hyphen help this is also a help command which can help us to get some information about the given command the syntax is first we need to type the command and then hyphen hyphen help let's say we want to know more about the mkdir so we can type mkdir hyphen hyphen help so it will give us the information about the mkdir so it is telling the usage which is nothing but a syntax and then also giving the explanation so this mkdir will create the directory or directories if they do not already exist so if somebody wants to create a directory in the system then they need to use mkdir command okay and then we also have some options which can be used with the mkdir you can also use help mkdir looks like using help there are no topics available for this mkdir similar to what we have seen ls and other commands right so you can type help if you are getting this kind of message then you can use mkdir hyphen hyphen help okay so the point is we need to know more about that particular command there are different ways to know more information about the given command you can use any of those commands to get more details of that 
command so in our list the next command is man man stands for manual pages okay so if you want to find out any information about a given command in man pages then you should use the man the syntax is man the command okay for example i want to know more about cp command okay then i should type man cp then it will take me to the man pages where it will tell us more details about this particular cp command so the cp is copying files and directories and this is the syntax that we need to follow and again it is giving the description along with the different options just one thing in some ssh clients we cannot use mouse so in that case you may need to depend on the different commands to navigate these man pages okay so if you don't know how to navigate then we can also make use of man help page which can be opened by pressing h so let's press h here it is telling the different commands that we can use to navigate these man pages okay if you want to display the help you should type either lower case h or upper case h or if you want to quit from the man pages you can use q or colon q and for moving if you want to forward one line you can use e or if you want to go to backward one line then y so you can go through all these different option and then do some practice to navigate man pages without the help of mouse okay if you want to go back from this help to the previous page you should type q okay so press q then that will take back to the man pages okay so if you want to quit from this man pages press q again it will take back you to the terminal in the beginning stage we may feel little difficult going through that man pages because some ssh clients will not allow us to use mouse so we need to depend on the different commands so practice those commands so that you will be more familiarized using those man pages man pages are very important because it is not possible to remember each and every option or each command right so same like googling any specific information in linux we can make use of man to get to know more about that command and the different options you can also type man space man which will tell about more about this manual pages okay so if you want to quit again you can press q so that will take back us to the terminal so these three four and five are mostly the help commands so you can use any one command it's not necessary that you have to use any one particular you can use any one of them to get to know more about the target command okay so the next command in our list is echo echo command is basically to print out the text arguments onto the screen so if you want to print something onto the screen in the linux system then you should use echo the syntax for the echo is echo space arguments so echo and then type anything so for example this is an example so what it will do is it will print the entire text after the echo so if you see here this is an example so you can type any gibberish it doesn't matter it will just simply print that onto the screen since we have used a semicolon which is the end of that echo command and then whatever we type after that linux will think that as a command and it will try to look for that command since f is not a command that is why it is giving the error okay so you can use semicolon to type multiple commands in the same line instead of typing them one after another okay and the next command in our list is clear this is just basically to clear the screen so you have so much information and you don't want all this information you want to start from the scratch then you can type clear that will clear the entire screen and then we'll take the cursor to the beginning okay so if i press enter it will clear the screen you can also use ctrl l as a shortcut to clear the screen and the next command in our list is history so sometimes we want to know what are all the different commands that we have executed so in that situation we can make use of the history command the syntax is you just need to type history it will list all the commands that we have typed so you see here we have typed different commands in this session right so it is listing out all the commands so if you want to execute any particular command from the previous history you can simply use exclamation mark and then the command number for example i want to clear the screen so the clear command is available in line number 17 so exclamation 17 so that will be equivalent as typing clear commands the moment i press the enter it will clear the screen if i go back to history we can see 17 is the clear and then 19 again because we cleared the screen right so that is why it is updated that clear command in the history so by default it will save thousand commands in the history after that it will try to override the previous command so there is a configuration that we can use to reset it but from our learning purpose we don't need to go to that detail okay in some situation this history command also handy for us to understand what commands we have typed previously so instead of retyping entire thing we can find out that command and then re-execute that command using the shortcut so before going any further with our next commands we need to understand a concept called path 
basically a path is how we refer to the files and directories for example if i open windows explorer go to c drive go to program files and then let's say docker here the path is c program files and docker if somebody is asking where exactly this docker is installed then we will give this particular path right so this is exactly same in the linux system as well so the only difference is in windows we will have path with backward slash and in linux it will be with the forward slash okay so the example is like here this is monitoring.sh is a script which is available in root under root there is a directory called home again under home we have a subdirectory called username and in that username directory we have another subdirectory called script in that script directory we have this monitoring sh if somebody wants to access this particular monitoring.sh they need to give this path so then only the linux system can understand that this monitoring.sh is available in this given path and it will try to execute that script okay so in linux we refer this path in two ways one is the absolute path which always starts from the root directory so in the example we starts like the slash home username script and monitoring.sh right so this is the absolute path and we also have another path called a relative path so this starts from the current working directory so generally we will use two notations when we are specifying any path in the relative path method that is single dot or double dots single dot denotes the current working directory itself and then double dot refers to the working directory's parent directory so if you go back to the example so the script is the current working directory so what would be the parent direct the immediate parent directory is username for username it's home for home it's root okay so if you want to refer username from the script using relative path then you should use double dot slash script so then the linux will think we are trying to refer the username okay so you can give either absolute path or relative path the idea is we need to give the correct path so that linux system can understand what exactly we are trying to refer in the system so the next command is pwd pwd nothing but present working directory if you want to know what what is your current working directory then you can type pwd okay so let's go back to our terminal the syntax is just we need to type pwd it will give us what is our current working directory so we are in root home slash admin user so currently we are in the admin user folder so whatever we do it will be stored in admin user directory okay and the next command is ls ls is the most frequently used command by many administrator or users okay this command will help us to list all the different files and directories in the current working directory so the syntax for the ls command is ls space options space path name okay first we will simply type the ls so if we are not specifying any options or path name then what linux system will assume is that we are trying to refer the current working directory okay for example let's type ls without any options or path okay and then press enter what it will do is it will try to list all the different files and directories within the current working directory which is slash home slash admin user so all these files are available in the admin user directory okay so that is what we are seeing on the left hand side also right these are all the different directories and the files that are available for example if you want to list files and directory in a given path we need to specify the path let's say ls slash home here we are telling that we want to see all the files and directories that are available under home so let's press enter it is telling us only the admin user directory is available so in the mobile x terms in blue color it will show the directory and the white color these are all the files okay you don't need to go to home directory to list all the files you can list that from anywhere so if you want to list all the files and directories of a given directory you need to specify the path okay so in the above example i try to specify the path in the absolute path manner right you can also use the relative path as well so in linux we have a long listing format so if you want to list the files using the long listing format we need to specify the option hyphen l okay so let's say ls hyphen l and then press enter here we are also getting the same output of files and directories that are available in the current working directory but it is giving in a long listing format okay so here we can see more information about each file or directory so there are different columns available so if you go back to the notes so the first column which is hyphen r w hyphen r w hyphen r dash dash so this is the permission so even here we can see the permission information so this permission information is belongs to this particular directory or file so some files are not available for every user so when we try to access that file we may be getting permission denied error message only the super user or the admin users can you know access those files 
So here the admin username is the username, but the user does not have the admin privileges. You just need to remember that. Okay. So it is the name of the user. It doesn't mean that if we have the username as admin user, we can do whatever we want, right? So there are so many restrictions in Linux system. That is why it is more secure compared to the other operating systems. So here R means read and W means write. And then we will also have X, which is nothing but executable. So if we are only seeing R everywhere, then that means we only have the read permission to that file or directory. If you have both R and W, that means we can either read or write to that file or directory. And if you have X also, then so that means we can read that file. We can do some write operations and we can also execute that file if it is an executable file. Okay. So that is the first column and the second is the number of links and the third column. So in our example, it is showing as the admin user. So this is telling us who is the owner of this particular file or directory. In this case, the Apache logs.txt, the owner is admin user. So the admin user has read and write permissions. Okay. Since this is not an executable file, that is why we don't have X permission here, but we can read the file or we can write or make some changes to this file. And the next section is the group name okay so this admin user is belongs to a group called admin user so in linux every user belongs to one particular group so when we create a new user basically the username and the group name is same so that is why it is showing username and group name is same in real time you know we will have different groups and the permissions will be given to that user according to their role and responsibilities okay and the next column is the file size by default the file size will be displayed in bytes okay so the next column is last modification time. So that means at what time this file has been modified. Okay. So when you are troubleshooting that file, you can use this information to understand when this file has been modified. And finally, we have the name of the file. Okay. So in the permission section, the first column also tell us whether this is a file or directory. If it is a directory, then we will be seeing D. If you are seeing the hyphen means that is a file. Okay. So we have an option also available in LS. So which is ls hyphen capital F, which will tell us whether this is a file or directory. If it is a directory, then it will append the forward slash with the directory name. Okay. If you see here, desktop is a directory, documents is a directory, but nginx underscore logs.txt is a file. That is why we don't have forward slash. Okay. And other commonly used options using ls is hyphen a. So if you carefully notice on the left hand side, we can see all the different directories, right? But some information is not available here. For example, we are not able to see the cache directory or config directory or dot local or dot Mozilla and also same thing dot bash history or bash logout, right? So if any file or directory starts with dot means that is a hidden file or directory. By default, when we type ls command, Linux will not show any hidden files. So if you want to see all the hidden files, then you should type ls hyphen a then it will list all the files and directories, including hidden files. Okay. Let's type ls hyphen l hyphen a. So we can see that information in a long listing format. It is more readable, right? Compared to the other. So you can see dot cache dot config. Now we can see all the files. So you can also type the options in this way, like hyphen l hyphen a, or you can also type them together. So you can also rewrite the same command as ls hyphen l a it will give the same exact output. So if you are combining multiple options, you don't need to give hyphens in front of each option. You can give hyphen at the beginning and then type all the different options. Okay. We can generally use hyphen H option, which will give the file size in a human readable format. For example, this is in bytes. So it will be a little difficult to understand what is the file size of that Apache logs.txt, right? So we can use ls hyphen L H then we will get the same information in the human readable format. So now we can see Apache logs.txt file is 2.3 megabytes. Similarly, Nginx logs file is 6.7 megabytes. Okay. And then we also have hyphen R, which will display all the files in the reverse order. So if I type ls hyphen L H R, then I can see all the information in the reverse order. So it will sort all the files based on the file name. So in the previous run, we can see apache underscore logs dot text at the beginning. Now with the hyphen R option, it sorted out in a descending order. So that is why the apache underscore logs dot txt file is showing at the end. And we can also sort them using time, the last modification time by giving the hyphen T option. So ls hyphen L H for human readable format of the file size and then type T. So now this time it is sorting based on the last modification time. 
So the users or administrator will use ls to understand quickly what are all the different files available or what is the file size or when did that file got modified all those information okay this is very frequently used command by administrators or the users so if you want to know more about this you can make use of our man or help so type man ls then we can see all the different options see there are so many options hyphen a is it will show all the entries starting with dot you can also use the hyphen hyphen all it's the same thing so to quit from this man pages type q so the next command in our list is cd so the cd command is to change the present working directory for example if you want to go from one directory to the another directory then you can use cd the syntax is you have to type cd space path name for example if you want to change from the current working directory which is slash home slash admin user to user bin then you can type cd slash user slash bin here i am giving the absolute path okay so the moment we press enter then then our current working directory will be changed to slash user slash bin okay so if i type pwd now i am at user slash bin so if i type ls it will try to list all the available files in the present working directory which is slash user slash bin these are all different executable files okay so if i type ls hyphen l then we can see all these files so you can also see x right because this is the executable and here if you see most of the files the owner is root in linux system root is nothing but the super user like admin privileged user so root can do anything so if you want to perform some administrative activities you may need to have a root privileges so either you can get you can be part of the root group so that you can also get the root privileges or you can get the password of the root so that you can log in as a root and then you can do all the administrative tasks okay and then if you want to go back to the previous directory which is slash user then we can use the the notation which is double dot so cd says double dot then it will take us to the user directory you can also see here it is telling us where we are exactly right so if i type pwd then it is telling the currently we are under slash user directory okay so if you want to quickly go back to the previous directory then you can use cd space hyphen so it will quickly take me to the previous directory which is slash user slash bin okay so this command is handy so when you are switching different directories you can use cd hyphen space to quickly go back to the previous directory and then we can also use cd to go to the user home directory so if i type cd then it will take me back to the user home directory which is slash home slash admin user okay so press enter if i type pwd you can see right now i am at slash home slash admin user you can also use cd space tilde which will do the same thing okay you can either use cd or cd space tilde tilde represents the home directory of that particular user so the next command in our list is mkdir so the purpose of the mkdir is to create a directory if there is no directory with that given name what linux will do is it will try to create the directory so the syntax we should type mkdir space directory name okay let's say we want to create a learn underscore linux directory then we can use mkdir if you are not specifying any path then what linux will do is it will try to create the directory in the present working directory okay so let's say if i am typing mkdir learn underscore linux then press enter then learn underscore linux directory is created in home slash admin user okay so if i type ls hyphen l then i can see a directory learn underscore linux so you can create directory anywhere in the linux system from the present directory the only thing you need to do is you need to specify the path for example if i want to create a directory under home directory so i can say mkdir slash home slash learn performance testing okay so this is the directory i want to create under home so if i press enter it is telling that i cannot create a directory because i don't have permissions so let's go back to home directory using cd dot dot which will take us to the home directory and then here type lsl if you type ls hyphen l or if we type ls hyphen l slash home what it will do is it will try to list out all the files that are available under the home directory correct so in this home directory we have only one directory available that is admin user but we want to understand who has the permissions to create any directory under home right so in that case we should use ls hyphen ld slash the path which is nothing but slash home so here if you see only the root user the owner of this home directory so root can read write and execute other than root none of them can create any directory inside the home directory so that is why we got the permission denied error so 
you can use hyphen d option along with ls to understand the permission of that particular directory okay so let's go back to admin user so you can type cd space admin user because we want to change directory from home to admin so you can use admin user and then press enter or you can also use tab key so in linux we have a feature called tab expansion so that means we don't need to type complete name or complete command okay so for example i want to change the current directory from home to admin user so i can type adm and then space tab if there are no multiple file names with ADM, then what Linux will do is whichever the file that starts with ADM will display the name here. So it will auto complete that file name. So instead of you to type entire thing, you can simply type CD space few letters of the file name or directory and then press tab. Okay. So now we switched from home directory to admin directory. Let's type PWD. So right now we are in home and admin user. Okay. So let's list different files that are available in this directory so we have a learn linux directory so we want to create another directory under learn underscore linux you can do it in two ways you can switch to that learn underscore linux directory or you can give a complete path so let's create a directory using mkdir and then space type learn press tab that will complete the directory name and then give new directory so this is the new directory that i want to create inside the learn underscore linux okay and then press enter so the directory is created. So if I want to see the different files and directories under learn Linux, so I can use ls hyphen l learn Linux. So it will show the different files, right? So right now we have created a new directory inside the learn underscore Linux. So it displayed the details. Okay. You can use mkdir command to create directory anywhere. If you are creating the directory in the current working directory, then you don't need to specify any path. But if you are trying to create the directory in a different location, then make sure you specify the path. Okay. So the next command in our list is rmdir. This is to remove the an empty directory. Okay. So let's switch to learn Linux directory by typing cd learn Linux, then ls. So we have new directory here, which is empty directory. So you can type ls hyphen l new directory. We can see total is zero because we don't have any files or directory inside the new directory. Let's say we want to delete this directory. So we can use rmdir space new directory. Okay. Then what Linux will do is it will remove that directory. So whenever you are using rmdir, make sure that you are not deleting any other files. Okay. So if I type ls now, we will not get any output because there is no directory inside learn Linux. So the next command is touch. The touch command will be used to create a blank or empty file. So if you want to create a file inside the Linux system, then you need to use touch command. The syntax is touch space file name. Okay. So let's say we want to create a file name inside learn underscore Linux. So touch, let's say the file name is abs.txt. Okay. So now if I type ls, then we can see the file name. Okay. So to create any files, this is one way of doing it. There are different other ways also, but we can use touch command to create a blank empty file here. Inside this file, there is no content. So if I type ls l, you can see the file size as zero bytes. Okay. So the next command in our list is cp. The cp command is to copy the contents of a file to a new file. Let's say you have an existing file and you want to copy the contents into a new file. Then you can use the cp command. So the syntax for the cp command is cp first we need to specify the source file and then the target file name okay so example is let's say we have a file called file.txt and we want to copy it in a new file called and we want to copy the contents of file.txt to file underscore copy.txt so then we have to give cp space file.txt space file underscore copy.txt okay so let's go back to our terminal so let's go back to our admin user directory so cd dot dot so i'm going to the previous directory right so if i type pwd i'm at home slash admin user let's type ls ltr let's copy the apache logs to a new file so cp apache then tab and then type apache logs dot new dot txt so i'm trying to copy the content of apache underscore logs dot txt to apache underscore logs underscore new dot txt okay and then press enter now if i type ls hyphen ltr i can also see a new file with the name apache underscore logs underscore new dot txt so whatever the content that we have inside this file is copied over to this file okay you see the size it is pretty much same 
Sometimes we want to copy the files recursively from different directories. We can use hyphen R option. Okay. So what that will do is it will try to copy all the files from the directory to a destination directory. So the next command is MV. MV command is used for two purposes. One to move file from one location to another location or to rename the file. So for renaming a file, we don't have a separate command. We can get it done using MV command itself. Okay, so the syntax is first we need to specify mv space source file and then path. Let's say we have a file inside our learn Linux, right? Which is abc.txt. We want to move this file from this directory to the admin user directory. So we can do that using mv command. So mv first we need to specify the file path, right? So which is learn Linux abc.txt and then where we want to move. So let's say if you want to move it in the current directory so we can either specify home slash admin user or we can use the notation of the current directory which is dot so when you say dot what linux will do is it will try to refer that as a current working directory okay so press enter then if i type ls ltr learn linux we will be seeing the total as zero because there are no files we moved that file from that directory to the current working directory so Let's type pwd, right? We are at home admin user. So let's type lsltr. Now we can see the abs.txt. Okay. We can also use to rename this abc.txt to a new name using mv command. The syntax is mv abc.txt and then let's say a123.txt. Okay. So this is the new file name. So if I type enter, then if we list the file, we don't have abc.txt anymore because we just renamed from abc.txt to a123.txt. Okay. So you can use mv command to move file from one location to another or you can use it to rename the file. And the next command is rm. rm command is to delete the file or even we can use to delete the directory itself. Okay. And the syntax is rm space file name or directory name. Okay, so let's say if you want to delete the a123.txt. So you can type rm space a123.txt. So if I type lsltr, so the file has been deleted. Okay, generally when we are accessing the servers, we will not have permissions to delete any files because we may be getting a read only user permission. So we can read the files, but we cannot write or delete them. Okay, but this is just to let you know there is a command that is available to delete any files. And we can use hyphen r options to recursively delete any files from the directory okay for example let's create a new file inside learn.linux abc.txt using touch command okay if i type ln learn.linux so we got an abc file now let's try to delete the learn underscore linux if i use rm learn underscore linux it cannot delete because we have a abc.txt file available inside learn underscore linux so we will get an error message saying that cannot remove learn underscore linux is a directory don't get confused with this error message basically it is telling that this directory is not empty so that is why it cannot delete so in that case we can use hyphen r option so hyphen r learn underscore linux okay when we press enter it will delete the directory so if i type ls ltr we don't see the learn underscore linux anymore okay so you can use hyphen r option to recursively delete the contents inside of the directory and the directory itself okay before we go any further with these commands we'll quickly go through the concept of wildcards basically these are the special characters that will allow us to select files or directories based on certain patterns of characters okay so the main pattern we are going to use in linux is asterisk which matches any characters and then we have question mark which matches a single character and then we can also specify the characters inside the angular parenthesis which will match any character that is a member of that set of characters and then we also have exclamation of characters within the angular parenthesis which is opposite to the previous pattern so what are the characters that we specified with this pattern will be ignored and rest will be matched okay we have some examples also available so the asterisk pattern or star pattern which matches all the file names and if you are specifying asterisk in front of a specific character like here g asterisk that means it will try to match all the file names or directories that starts with the g and in the third example we say b star dot txt so it will match all the file names that start with b but that ends with dot txt okay and you can use this pattern to match based on the requirements so you can use these wildcards in any of the commands that i have explained so far 
So let's go back to the terminal. Let's say I want to list all the files that starts with A. So I can say ls l a star. Okay. So that will give us all the files that starts with A. Let's say I want to list all the files that ends with dot txt. So I can say ls hyphen star dot txt. Okay. So that will give me the three files. These are all three files that ends with dot txt. Let's say I want to get the list of files that starts with a or n and then ends with dot txt. Then you can use those characters within this angular parenthesis. Okay. So now we will get all the files that starts with a or n and also and ends with dot txt. Okay. And then and then let's move on to IO redirections. Here IO means input output. Okay. So in Linux, input output is distributed across three streams. Those are standard input, which also referred as std in and then standard output which is also called as std out and then standard error again this is also referred as std err okay so these are the three different streams that users will use in the linux environment to input and output so these streams are also numbered you can refer standard input as zero instead of std in and the same thing for std out you can use one instead of std out and the two for a standard error so standard input always comes from the user keyboard so whatever we are typing that will be considered as the standard input. So standard output and standard error are displayed on the user's terminal as a text. In Linux, so we can use different redirection commands for each teams. For example, greater than symbol will be used for the standard output and then less than symbol will be used for standard input and then two greater than symbol will be used for standard error. Okay. So when we are using only these redirections, then what Linux will do is it will try to overwrite. For example, you are using this redirection operator on a file. So then what Linux will do is it will try to override the contents of the file. Okay. If you don't want to override the existing content of the file, then you can use the append redirection operator. So we have three operators. So greater than greater than for standard output and then less than less than for standard input and two greater than greater than for standard error. Okay. We also have another concept called pipes. Pipes are basically used to redirect a stream of output from one program to another. Let's say you want to take the output of one command and then you want to pass it as an input to the another command, then we can use these pipes. So in Linux, pipe symbol will be represented by a vertical bar. Okay. Now let's continue with our next command, which is cat. Basically this cat command will be used to display the content of a file. So you want to see the content of a file, then you can use this cat command. So the syntax is cat and then we can specify options if required and then the file name or file names. So you can view the content of multiple files at the same time. Okay. So let's go back to our terminal. So let's say I want to read the content of nginx underscore logs dot txt. So I can use cat nginx underscore logs dot txt. So then what it will do is it will display the content of the file. If file has more number of lines, it will show the last lines. So you can see this is a very big file. So it will Printed all the content and whatever the last page content it is showing on top of the screen. Let's clear the screen and then type lsltr. So let's say you want to see the content of apache logs.txt and then nginx logs.txt. So you can use the same cat command. You can type apache txt and then nginx underscore logs.txt. Then it will display the contents of both files. So using redirection operators, you can copy the content of one file to another file directly by using cat command. Okay. So let's say, let's say I want to copy the nginx underscore logs.txt to a new file. So I can say cat nginx underscore logs.txt greater than nginx new logs.txt. Okay. So when we use the redirection operator, it will not display the output on the screen. So what it does is took the output of that nginx underscore logs.txt and then it has written onto the nginx underscore new underscore logs.txt. If I do ls, so I can see two files. Okay. So if I use the same command again, what it will do is it will try to overwrite. So it will not keep the existing content. It will delete that existing content. It will rewrite with the file, whatever we have. For example, let's say we are saying Apache apache logs underscore logs dot txt greater than nginx new underscore logs dot txt so now what it will do is it will take the apache underscore logs dot txt content and then it will overwrite to the existing content okay so now if i press enter oh there is a typo so let me type apache dot txt greater than nginx new logs dot txt now if i type ls hyphen ltr 
you can see the file size of nginx new logs.txt earlier it was showing as 6.9 megabytes now it changed to 2.3 megabytes because we have overwritten the content with the apache logs.new.txt okay so instead of overwriting if you want to append then you can use the append operator so cat apache cat nginx logs.txt greater than greater than and then nginx new logs.txt now if i ls ltr then we can see the file size right so now it has the content of both apache logs and also the nginx logs.txt so that is why the file size is showing as 9.3 megabytes okay so you can use greater than or double greater than based on the requirement so we can also create a new file using cat so let's say cat greater than file one dot txt when you do this way what it will do is it will give you the cursor back to you so you can type the content directly here okay so let's say this is a line one this is a line two this is a line three so whatever the content that you want to type you can type once you are done press ctrl d so that will save the file so if i ls ltr here we can also see a file called file one dot txt okay so if i cat file one dot txt then we can see the content which is these three lines okay so you can create the file using this method as well you can use touch method you can copy the content of file from another file or you can use like cat greater than file name okay so if you want to see the contents in a reverse order then you can also use tac which is the reverse of cat and then file one dot txt so what it will do is it will show the content in a reverse order you see the line number three shows as first and then second line and second and then first line as last in linux if you want to re-execute the previous command so you can use the up arrow which will show you the last command that you have executed if you press multiple times it will show the previous commands okay so this is another way also you can rerun the same command again without typing it okay and if you want to see the line numbers of a given file then you can also use an option called hyphen n and then file name so let's say i say i want to see the content with the line number so i can type cat hyphen n file one dot txt now i can see the line numbers one two three okay so this is all about cat i'm not going each command in depth i'm just trying to give the the real time example that we generally use it when we are using the commands if you want to know more about that command you can very well use of man or help to understand the different options of that command okay so the next command in our list is more so this more command will be used to view the files in the terminal session one screen at a time so when we type cat apache log.txt what it is doing is it is trying to display the entire file right and then it is showing the last page we don't want this method we want to see one page at a time so we can use more and then file name okay so this time what will happen is it will wait for our input so you can press space bar go to the next page and then see the content and then it is also showing the percentage of that file that we are at okay so right now we have seen two percent okay so if you want to come out from this you can press q so that will exit from this more session and then take you back to the terminal so you can use more command to view any file from the current working directory the only thing is you need to specify the path let's say we have a file called sudo.conf in the etc directory and we want to view that file from here okay so we can type more slash etc slash sudo dot config so if you press tab twice then it will show all the options available with that given name so with sudo there are four different files and directories are available it given the list so that we can type the another command let's say if we type dot it will take the dot conf file okay so if i press enter so we got the permission in a error because any file inside etc by default we will not have permissions only the root user has a permission so let's check the permission using ls l ls hyphen l etc sudo dot conf so here the owner is root so that is why it is giving us the permission so administrators what they will do is they will use a command called sudo which is nothing but super user do and then they will perform the same action for example let's say more etc sudo.conf the moment we type the sudo it will ask us the password of the sudo which is nothing but the root user password so in this alma linux pm the password for the root user is also admin user so you can type admin user and it will display the content so this is another way to temporarily view the files which we don't have permission using sudo okay and if you want to see only certain number of lines in a file then you can also specify the number of lines using hyphen 
option okay so let's say i want to see only five lines from this sudo.conf so i can say hyphen five then it will show me only the first five lines of the sudo.conf okay you can also use more command with the combination of pipe let's clear this for example if you type cat apache.logs.txt it will show the entire file right so you can use pipe and more then it will show one page at a time see because what it is doing is first it is taking the output and then it is passing that output as input to this next command which is more so that is the beauty of this pipe so you can use pipe for n number of commands okay and the next command in our list is less this is same like more this will also help us to view the files in a terminal session one page at a time so the syntax is pretty much same instead of more you can use less apache logs.txt okay so it will give you the output one page at a time to go back to the terminal press q so that will take you back to the terminal okay and then we have the same option to display the n number of lines using less and also we can use that less with pipe to any other command okay so the next command in our list is head again this head by default will return the top 10 number of lines from that file so the syntax for the head is we can type head options and then file name so let's clear this if i say head apache.logs.txt it will show the top 10 lines okay for some reason i don't want top 10 lines i want only the top five lines so i can specify the option head hyphen n and the number of lines and the file name okay so this time instead of 10 lines head will show me the five lines let's say i want top 20 lines so i can change from 5 to 20 so that will show me the top 20 lines so you can use this head command to view the number of lines from the beginning of the file you can also use this head command to display the files from the multiple files okay so you can type the head command and then the file names and the next command is style so this is opposite to the head so this command will return the specified number of files from the bottom if you are not specifying any option then it will display the last 10 lines of that file okay so tile apache logs.txt so it will show you the last 10 lines of that file okay and you can use the same options hyphen n5 then it will show us the last five lines of that file you can use the same thing for multiple files also and the next command is grep this is to search and match the text pattern in the file so this is the most frequently used command so the syntax for this command is grep and then option and then pattern the file name okay so let's say i want to check if we have any error word in this particular apache log file okay so i can use grep and then specify the word error within the double quotation and then specify the file name dot px so what it will do is it will get all the lines that has the word error so we can see here there is an error html page requested and then we can also see the lines which has the error keyword okay so this will be helpful to understand if we have any errors in the logs okay so we can use other options with grip for example since the linux is case sensitive if you want to match error either in uppercase or lowercase you can use the hyphen i option so grep hyphen i error and then the file name which is apache logs dot txt okay so it will try to ignore the case and then it will try to retrieve all the lines that has the keyword error and then we can also use hyphen v to display the non-matching lines so we don't want to see the lines that has error and we want to see all other lines so you can use grep hyphen v within double quotation the error and then the file name apache underscore logs dot txt now it will show you all the lines that do not have this error keyboard and then sometimes we also need to find out the line number that has the specific keyword okay so in that case we can use the hyphen n option so we can let's say grep hyphen n and error and then apache logs.txt so we want to find out the line numbers where we had that error keyword in the log file so now it will show you the lines along with the line number so the first error keyword is available in 2298 line and then the second one is 2309 and then we have 3304 okay sometimes we want to find the pattern in all the files in the current working directory in that case we can use like this grep error and then star so it will try to look for all the files that has error okay after displaying that output at the end we also see 
some messages saying that grep pictures is a directory public is a directory so by default when we use grep error with asterisk it will only search in the current directory okay and if we have any other directories we will be getting this kind of message but if you want to search this recursively in all the directories in the current working directory then we can use f1 capital r so what it will do is it will search in all the sub directories as well so now we don't see that message anymore okay and sometimes we want to display the number of lines before that error keyword okay in that case we can use the option hyphen b and then specify the n number of lines that we want to display before that keyword appears in the log file okay so let's say grep hyphen b for error and then apache logs.txt so what it will do is it will get the four lines before that error keyword so so here this is the error keyword and then it is also getting us the previous four lines right and the same thing the other error keyword and then four lines and if you want to get the number of lines after that keyword then you can use hyphen a instead of hyphen b a for after b for before okay so it will display the next four lines after that keyword okay sometimes we want to find all the file name that matches that specific pattern in that case we can use the hyphen l option now i want to know all the files that has this error keyword in the current working directory so now we can see it is telling it found it in apache logs or apache logs.txt nginx new.txt it is also telling us desktop downloads documents is not a directory because we are not asking linux to recursively search right so you can use that option also to avoid this error so you can add hyphen l capital r and then press enter now it will tell all the files that has this particular keyword okay and then if you want to count the number of matches that this particular pattern is available in a given file then you can use hyphen c option so grep hyphen c error apache logs.txt so we want to count how many lines this error keyword in that apache underscore logs.txt so it has seven occurrences okay so we can also achieve the same output in different way also let's type grep error apache log dos txt and then pipe it wc wc is a word count and then if you use hyphen l option it will count the lines so what it will do is it will display all the lines with keyword error from this apache logs dot txt and that will be an input to this particular command okay so if i press enter then i will be getting the same seven okay so for example if i type wc hyphen l apache logs dot txt it will count all the lines so there is 10000 lines available in this apache underscore logs dot txt so in the 10000 lines there are seven lines with the keyword error okay so you can also use grep with other commands using pipe for example if we type lsltr it will give all the files that are available in the current directory right so you can use grep i and then file so from this output it is extracting a line that has the file so that is why we got only the file one dot txt okay so you can use this pipe symbol to get more filtered output as per your requirement and the next important command is find this is basically to find the files are directly based on certain conditions so the syntax is find and then path after that options and then we need to specify the patterns for example if you want to find in the current working directory with the name apache okay so we don't know whether we have any files with the name apache so we want to find so if we press enter it will show you all the different files that starts with apache because i'm using wildcards okay so that is why i got two files apache underscore logs dot txt and also apache underscore logs underscore new dot txt for example we want to find all the configuration files that are available in the linux system so we can use find slash as a root directory and then yeah. hyphen name star dot com so it will try to look for all the configuration files okay in the output we do see some permission denied because we will not have access to those files that is why it is giving the permission denied error message okay you can also use the type option if you want to find a directory or a file for example we want to find all the log files in the system so we can use find we want to start from the root directory so slash and then type f and then use star dot log so so we also need to specify hyphen name so that is why it is giving that error message so now we can see all the different log files since some of the files we don't have permission it is giving the permission denied you can also use sudo so you can type 
the same command sudo and then so it will ask for the password so type password so now we don't have that permission denied error messages okay so these are all the different files that are ends with dot log extension okay so if you notice here most of them are under var so any log files mostly available under var directory okay and finally we have exit if you want to exit from this terminal session you can type exit that will end this session okay and i also given some other important commands which is mostly used by the administrators so if you want to know more about you can use either man or help for example i want to know more about id okay so i can use id hyphen hyphen help so this id command will be used to print the user and group information for each specified user if you are not specifying any user it will display the information of the current user let's say if i type id so then it is telling us the user information of this admin user okay so user id is thousand then group id is thousand and groups is thousand so this user is belongs to the admin user and wheels group okay so you can go through those commands and then try to practice it since this is a vm we will not have any issues to use any administrative commands but in real time we will not have access to all those administrative commands so we are limited because of the security reasons okay so if you want any administrative activities then you may need to reach out to the admin of the server so that they can help us to execute those commands on behalf of us okay so let's exit this terminal session by typing the exit command so that will close the session so you see here the user is logged out so if you want to log in again then you need to double click the session it will ask us to input the user password okay so this is the way you can log in and then execute all the different linux commands so that's it for this video thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me i hope you found this video helpful if you have any questions or want to share your experiences feel free to leave a comment below all the video notes have been uploaded in github and you can find the link in the description if you are new to our channel please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited i'll see you in the next video in this module until then take care stay safe and keep learning